Hello, this video is to show uh, some version 2 upgrades to my CSM sock knitting machine. Uh, all these upgrades are completely optional. If you're using version 1 and it works for you, there's no need to print these out. Uh, first up, we have the, uh, the heel break and spring, which I'm showing here. And when we first start doing heels, we notice it's, it's difficult without this to keep tension correct on there. So I decided to, to make this, and it's based on the old metal machines uh, from the early 1900s. It's very similar in design. First, you've got your, your, your Y, your big guide piece. Then you have your, your pivot here, and on the pivot, it's got a short piece of the same brass tubing that you use for the up-throw cams, and it's held in place through the guide with about an inch and a half piece of the 1 8 inch drill rod and those you don't really need to glue into place they should uh, friction should keep them in place on there uh, next you have your weight holder down here and it's connected to the pivot with uh, I've got a, just a piece of wire holding the two together and you can use wire or, or string or whatever you like and then fill your weight holder with whatever weights you, you've got around. I used uh, some 1 8 inch uh, ball or 3 8 inch ball bearings that we had, um, but just fill it with whatever weight you got. You go through a series of guides, and then you have your brake piece here, and that's kind of fiddly to make. You're going to start out with uh, adding a piece of the, the brass tubing in your guide, and then you're going to use the eighth inch drill rod. You're going to have to bend this to the shape I have here uh, to get it to work. And the big part is the, the, the piece that goes through the guide here uh, that's in the brass tubing. You want to do your best not to bend that. Keep that straight. Don't put any pliers on it. Don't put it in the vise or anything like that. Um, I went through and drilled a, a hole in a, a piece of wood and then bent it after that. So you want to go through, mark your lengths, and go through and mark a spot, then bend it, mark your spot and bend it, and just go through. And what, the, what you want is this horizontal piece, you want it to land somewhere between the top of that hole and the top of this part here. And what that's going to do is that's going to sandwich that yarn in there and hold it in place. I've got it a little low on there. It should be a little higher. It should land somewhere there. And then I went through and I roughened up the back side of that so it, would, uh, it wouldn't be so slippery on that. So just, just go through and uh, mark where you want to bend it. And like I say, any, any spot on the outside here, you can put pliers on it and just come back and if you need to polish it, that's no biggie. But, um, and then I also tried to make it so when it lays down that this guy lays flat on there. And then you can just make a hook here. And it'll wanna, you'll wanna stop it to where it's, you know, maybe half an inch here from your exit hole. Okay, so there's how it works. Um, next piece, this is your, uh, this is your spring, and for this you should use a 1 uh, spring steel. If you don't have it, any kind of straight 1 metal should work. Um, so you're going to glue it into your pivot back here, and then you can bend it to whatever shape you like. And I've got it to where it's going to, uh, it's going to end pretty close to the exit hole here. And when it's down, it's going to clear this, this right here. So it should come almost all the way down like that. Okay, so let's go let's, uh, adjust here and we'll show you some other features I've got. Okay, when I uh, when I first did this, I was having a little bit of problem with it. It was a little tough to turn, 
and what I thought might be the problem was the upthrow cams. They were very short, and it seemed like they were a little steep on there, on the angle on here. And so what I did was I redesigned the upthrow cams so they're longer, so they don't give such a steep angle um, to throw them. And so here's what I came up with. The left side is the old design, and the right is the new design. And you could also see the uh, the left side is very pointy on there, and, and the right and the new design has got a um, a bigger angle on the point there. Hopefully that won't wear as bad on there. Um, I also made mine out of metal. Uh, I've got the plastic in there, uh, the, the design for the plastic ones, and you can uh, you can print that. The only caveat is there's a left and right hand version now on that, uh, so you'll have to print both of those. But on the metal, if you want Use some uh, 5 32nd by a quarter inch, uh, just regular coal roll metal, and then uh, bend it to about the, the diameter of this. And that's, that's the key part is to bend it first, and then you can cut it out and uh, grind it, drill your hole for your 1 8 inch drill rod and such. But like I say, if you can't do that, the plastic should work just fine. Um, along with that, you're going to have to remake your cam shell here. Uh, since I've got those up throw cams longer and you're gonna have to I did a little bit of redesign on the um, the tension cam so you'll have to reprint that also uh, but that's that's a pretty short print to do the other thing um, I did was I redesigned the guide here just kinda made it a little more like the old design so if your if your latch is open Hopefully it'll it'll hit those edges and pop down as you're as you're turning around. So it's a little more like the old designs. And then I um, I increased the height of this. That seemed like it was a little short on the stem there. Uh, the last thing was I added a counter and I added the brackets for the counter and for the sensor here. And then I, uh, I added a hole in the stem there, and you can see I put a magnet in there. And um, the magnet, if it was pretty good friction fit for me, but if it doesn't fit good for you, just glue it in place, or you can hot glue it, or epoxy, whatever you want. It doesn't matter which way the magnet goes in. Uh, if you're worried about the polarity of it, just put it in either way. It should work. And then on the, uh, you've got your sensor here, and it is wired in the back to the count and it's got two wires on this on on the end and it doesn't matter which which way you wire the end. either way will work on that um, it's a little hard to see the the count on there um, it's not backlit on there but it, it works pretty good on there so I think that's all the options all the upgrades I had on this if you have any questions let me know um, I've been working on a river design, so hopefully I'll get that uh, finished in a few weeks. Thanks.